I'd like to speak to a lawyer now. Please. You have no murder weapon. You have nothing. And all these stories we've been telling each other. Just that. It's curious. I think it's easy to forget the true power that video games have to simply tell a story. Having an interactive element allows it to be the only medium where the consumer can potentially directly affect the outcome of how a story unfolds. But not everything has hit its mark over the years. Now obviously a lot of games don't even attempt to have a plot, but for those that do, we've generally seen some very conservative and safe ways to tell stories. Nine times out of ten, a game simply has cutscenes, and the role of the consumer is to act as nothing more than a passenger to the story for these segments just like they would for a film or a novel. Now, in an attempt to add a more interactive element, we started seeing the games that would traditionally fall in this category to implement quick time events in around the mid-2000s, with varying success, I guess? I mean, the thing is, even good quick time events aren't really enough to move the needle. I mean, come on, can you really think of a single QTE that actually makes the scene more engaging? Now, in my opinion, we saw the most legitimate advancements in narrative design during around the late 90s with games like Half-Life, which in this instance, featured a full story that never gave up your first-person control and really put you in the shoes of the character of Gordon Freeman. However, until the last few years, I really didn't think that the industry pushed the boundaries past what a game like Half-Life originally revolutionized. I mean, quick-time events certainly weren't the answer. Recently, though, certain independent games have truly attempted to tell stories in their own unique formats, and they take advantage of interactivity in ways that have never been done before. One of my personal favorites is Lucas Pope's Return of Oberdin, which puts the player in the role of a detective, in a sense, to unravel a mystery. What this game in particular does that's intriguing is create a full non-linear story that's revealed at the pace of the player themselves. Now, what's interesting is that her story in Telling Lies, Sam Barlow's two most recent games and the main subjects for this video, follow a somewhat similar structure, but they stand out with a few minor design decisions that really make them unique. Most notably, these games are inspired from a genre of gaming that... Well, many want to simply forget due to how poor they were back in the day. And they are... FMV Adventure Games. Now this is where you have to give Sam Barlow some credit. I mean, I look back at the Night Traps and Phantasmagorias of that era and see a failed experiment. But obviously he must have seen some untapped potential, because this format is a large reason why these games are so unforgettable. The entire backbone of her story in Telling Lies is built on the performances of these actors, with the scenes themselves being minimalistic, especially in her story's case. Most of the time, you're just watching some dialogue unfold, but as a result, part of the narrative becomes driven by the player's own perception of how these scenes are playing out, on the lookout for the true intent behind how these characters are talking or acting. Now in both of these games, these scenes are accessed through a fake operating system GUI that has you simply entering keywords through a search bar, which will in turn bring up clips that are associated with that keyword. That's it! That's all that makes up the gameplay, but this simplistic setup allows for the player to be in command of how the story is unveiled. You are in complete control of what videos you see and what order you access them, so the clips that you view will be tied to whatever topics piqued your interest along the way, and the amount of story that you get will fully depend on how much time you invest into the game itself. As a result, the games almost become a kind of create-your-own-Tarantino film in itself, as part of the appeal is piecing together in your head the chronological order of the clips and how one may tie in with another. Different players will experience a different progression of clips based on what catches their attention. You may stumble upon a plot twist quicker than your friend, but the gravity of the situation will vary since you both had different contextual knowledge when going into viewing that clip. When playing these games, I truly feel as if I'm discovering the truth behind the mystery, and the performances of these actors allows it to feel genuine instead of a cheesy mess. In a way, both her story and telling lies are designed in a format that makes me forget that I'm technically playing a video game in the first place, and I'm not sure if that's good or bad. To this day, I still hear complaints that if someone just wants to watch a movie then they go to a theater, blah blah blah, whenever they hear that a game has a lot of story, but I've never really agreed with that mentality. Games are just another form of entertainment at the end of the day, and if the story is strong and presented well enough to keep you entertained all the way through, then I think that just dismissing something because it leans heavily on its plot is a sure way to prevent you from experiencing something that you may actually really enjoy. The reason I mention this is that while, yes, you are mostly just watching videos in these games, the narrative structured in her story and telling lies is simply impossible to convey through any other medium without sacrificing something that makes them so engaging to begin with. Interactivity is that important to these titles. So why shouldn't they deserve to be praised alongside the more traditional titles of the medium? 
To me, these games represent a progressive take on how interactive stories are told, and hopefully we'll start seeing more from developers embracing the potential complexities that games are capable of. Personally, I think above anything else really, I've always valued creativity in the design of games, so maybe that's part of the reason why I'm so enthusiastic about these two titles specifically. Because, believe me, I know they're not perfect. I'd say that Her Story's plot is something I'd recommend to just about every person, but Telling Lies? It did admittedly have a story that was a bit of a letdown, even though it does make a solid first impression. But it was still slightly disappointing at the end of the day. But I think either way, the way these stories are told is what makes the price of admission 100% worth it in my opinion. Now, even though I didn't enjoy Telling Lies as much as Her Story, it still evoked for me that same feeling that I was in charge of how the story unfolded which I can't stress enough, is an awesome sensation that only a game can do. I truly believe that games are the best vessel to tell complex stories, and we just haven't garnered their full potential yet, and her story and telling lies are a part of the foundation for innovation going forward. FMV adventure titles will likely not be the revolutionary genre going forward, I know that, but it's an instance of reviving something what was long thought to be dead into something completely fresh that challenges conventional narrative design. The industry as a whole may not remember her story in Telling Lies as much as I will, but they'll always be to me the ideal example of how the incorporation of interactivity can heighten the depth of any story.